My name is Lisa, a part-time working housewife, living a lively and joyful life with my husband, Noah. Noah's kind and cheerful nature always brings a smile to my face. Besides our enjoyable conversations, I love how he expresses his gratitude in words. I adore Noah, and today, like always, we are living happily together. Uh, I can't have Lisa's homemade cooking tonight. It's hard to decline an invitation from the boss, right? Yeah. I owe a lot to the boss, so I have to go. Then I'll make your favorite meal for dinner tomorrow, so look forward to it. Really? All right. I'll come home on time tomorrow, and we'll have dinner together. In this way, every day was filled with happiness. Then, one day, we had made a reservation at a fancy restaurant for my mother-in-law's birthday celebration, per her request. Hello, Noah. My head hurts. It feels like it's splitting. Could you come over right away? Ouch, it hurts. Wait, Mom, are you okay? Just lie down and try to get comfortable. I hope she's all right. I'll go pay the bill at the restaurant. I feel anxious if someone isn't with me. Noah, could you come home first? I'll pay the bill quickly and come right away with Lisa. Okay. Because my mother-in-law suddenly fell ill, we explained the situation to the restaurant and headed to her place immediately after paying. While Noah parked the car, I went ahead inside to check on her. Mother, are you okay? Should we go to the hospital? Oh, Lisa, how long did it take you to pay the bill? I said I had a headache. You should have gone to pay by yourself. Mom, are you okay? Is it any better? Oh, Noah, I'm so sorry for ruining the dinner you reserved. I really tried to make it, but the headache was too much. As soon as my mother-in-law saw me, she started nagging, pretending to be unwell in front of Noah. It was obvious she was faking it, which left me a bit exasperated wondering what her goal was. A few months later. On this day, Noah and I were celebrating our wedding anniversary with a meal in a lovely private restaurant room. Hello mom, do you need something? We're kind of. I fell down the stairs. It hurts so much I can't move. What? Noah, what's wrong? Mom said she fell down the stairs. I'm sorry to bother you on your anniversary, but could you come over right away? Ouch. Got it. Noah, let's hurry. Yeah, let's go. We canceled our meal midway and rushed to my mother-in-law's house. However, she had no injuries and was just pretending to be in pain. Every time we had some sort of anniversary, we would get calls like this. Because of this, we never had a proper celebration, and I was getting quite frustrated. Then one day. My 60th birthday is coming up. Could you talk to Noah and have the party at our place? Understood. Is there anything you would like to eat? Oh, is Lisa going to cook? In that case, I'd like roast beef, sushi. Oh, and please make a homemade cake. Got it. I'll make sure to prepare everything for the special celebration. We decided to celebrate my mother-in-law's birthday and her 60th anniversary, so I agreed to her requests. The day of the celebration arrived. After I finished preparing the food, I received a call from my mother-in-law. Uh, Lisa, my throat has been sore since morning. I have a high fever and can't get up. What? Are you okay? I'm sorry. You prepared all the food, right? Well, my health is bad, and I'm getting old. So it can't be helped, right? Um, mother? Are you really feeling unwell? What? I didn't hear you. Did you say something? Ah, uh, no, nothing. Oh, what should I do? I'm in trouble. I can't move, and I can't even think about eating. I have no appetite, no energy to meet people, and I can't eat anything. Do you have any medicine? Or should we go to the hospital? I'll be fine if I just rest. But no one will eat the food you made, right? Lisa, I'm really sorry, but the food you made today, I'm afraid you'll have to throw it all away before it goes bad. Please do that for me. What? But I made so much. Listen, I'm sick, so it can't be helped. I'm too tired to even hold my phone, so I'm hanging up now. Goodbye. Despite her high fever, her voice sounded very energetic. After she hung up the phone, I thought this was a good opportunity to put a certain plan into action. A few hours after that call, when I arrived at my mother-in-law's house, she came back from somewhere a bit later than I did. Oh, mother, what a coincidence. Where did you go even though you were feeling unwell? Lisa, what are you doing here? Why are you standing in front of my house? I'm not doing anything. 
You said you had a high fever, so I was worried and came to check on you. Noah lent me the key. Oh, really? But there's no need to worry. I'm fine. But you were so unwell that you cancelled your birthday party, saying you had no energy. So, you can't be okay, and I can't help but worry. Shut up. It's none of your business, Lisa. That's harsh. I'm Noah's wife, so I'm supposed to be family with you too, right? I was always against Noah marrying you. Noah deserves a much better woman than you. Oh, I see. So that's why you always interfere whenever we try to celebrate something. Mother, can I take it that everything until now was intentional? That's right. I'm looking for a matchmaker. So one day you'll divorce Noah. There's no way I'll let you celebrate anything. I'll ruin everything until you do divorce. What? A matchmaker? Yes. So, get out of here right now. You don't have time to chat with me. Go home and start preparing for the divorce. My mother-in-law said that and walked into the living room. Then... What? What is this? What do you mean, what is this? That's our line. We all gathered here to surprise you and celebrate your 60th birthday. Hey, dear! Explain the situation right now. Father, why are you here? Aren't you on a solo assignment? A 60th birthday is special, so I got leave and came back. You did all this without telling me. Lisa, you set me up, didn't you? That wasn't my intention. I just wanted to make you happy. Don't play dumb with me. Mom, what was that conversation earlier? We heard everything. Why are you looking for a matchmaker for me? What are you thinking? The neighbors were talking about it. I wasn't serious about setting you up for a match. Of course not. Excuses won't work now. Yay, Mom. You said earlier that you were against the marriage. I was just a little emotional earlier. I didn't mean it seriously. Mother, you've been nagging me whenever something came up, right? You even told me to throw away all the food I prepared today before it goes bad. What, Mom? Did you really say that to Lisa? What's wrong with you? So this is what they call mother in law bullying. All those times you interrupted our anniversaries. Faking illnesses to ruin them. That's really the worst. Everyone had gathered in the living room to surprise my mother-in-law with a 60th birthday celebration. She was more shocked than delighted because she had no idea about the surprise. Noah had his suspicions about her faking illnesses, but since his father was away on a solo assignment and his mother was alone at home, he couldn't ignore her. When Noah pointed out her past health issues. Oh, Noah, how can you say such things? I've never faked an illness even once. Then, mother, where were you today? We've been waiting here for three hours. Yeah, I went to the hospital before my condition worsened. Today is Saturday. The Kosika Hospital is closed on weekends. And the hospitals around here don't operate on weekends. Mom, there's no point in telling lies that can be easily found out. I went to a hospital far away, which is open on Saturday mornings. It's terrible to suggest I went out for fun. Then show us the hospital receipt and your medicine book. Yeah, I threw them away and I didn't get any medication. Then what is this? This is a photo from the morning of this year's wedding anniversary. Oh, what's the matter with this photo? Look closely at this. Mom, the day before this photo, you fell down the stairs. Oh, yes. That was a tough time. Almost couldn't move for a week. How did you manage during that time? Lisa made meals and brought them over. They weren't very good, but since there was nothing else to eat, I finished them reluctantly. Then why were you standing in line at the pachinko parlor early in the morning? You supposedly needed help, yet you were there like it was nothing. Isn't that odd? My mother-in-law's illnesses and injuries were all lies. Even though she acted so convincingly in front of Noah, her lies were quickly exposed. As I watched to see how she would respond. All right, all right, I admit it. Yes, I was standing in line at the pachinko parlor. Is that what you wanted to hear? I was just walking and decided to have some fun. What's wrong with that? Don't be foolish. You had Lisa cook for you and made those who genuinely cared about you worry for nothing. What on earth have you been doing while I was away? Just living normally, of course. Don't act high and mighty just because you came back for a bit. Stop being so shameless. It's disgraceful to get angry when things don't go your way. Shut up. 
I only get angry because you're being annoying. Mother, could you please take a look at this photo? Even if father wasn't here, this is just too much. Seriously, what are you thinking? Oh my, you have a photo like this. Yes, we do. Oliver's great at capturing the perfect moment. Mom, were you cheating on dad while he was away? No, no, it's just Mama Katsu. It's not a serious relationship, so it doesn't count as cheating. Don't make excuses. What were you thinking? Mama Katsu means you're the one paying, right? You're a housewife with no job. Where did you get the money? Oh, just from here and there. Tada, your bank book. Let's see the balance. Hey, there's only 200 yen in here. You can't do Mama Katsu with that. Are you in debt, mother? Yes, but what's the big deal? We can pay it off with father's retirement money, so it's not a problem. It turned out that my mother-in-law had taken on debt for her Mama Katsu activities. The balance in her bank book was 200 yen. She had even spent the money my father-in-law had earned. My father-in-law, who trusted her to take care of the house, was... No excuses! Eek! You, did you take on debt expecting to use my retirement money to pay it off? Even if you use that money to repay the debt, what about our retirement? Oh, it will only reduce a little bit. So it's no big deal, right? It's a huge deal. Mama Katsu costs a lot of money. I saw it on TV or something. Mom, you've been a housewife ever since you married Dad, right? How is someone with no income supposed to repay the debt? Well, let's do this. I spent Dad's savings, but there's no point in talking about the past, right? So from now on, we'll repay it little by little from Dad's salary. How about that? What are you talking about? Oh, why is everyone so on edge? Dad's salary comes in every month, so if we pay it back properly, there shouldn't be a problem, right? Father doesn't work to pay off your debts. Mother, they say we're living in an era where life expectancy is 100 years, so retirement can be quite long. Isn't it crazy to reduce future savings because of this debt? When the time comes, we'll deal with it then. Health care costs will be cheaper in the future anyway. If you think like that, you'll really regret it in case of an emergency. I will never regret anything. Enough! I can't be with someone who does such things so easily. We're getting a divorce. Divorce. My sister and I will cut ties with you too, Mom. You've been lying all this time. Noah, what are you saying? If you cut ties, I won't have any family left. Stop saying such spoiled things. You will repay all the debt yourself. My mother-in-law had been spending my father-in-law's income for her own pleasures. As a result, she was finally told by my father-in-law that they were getting a divorce, and Noah and Mia said they would cut ties with her. Wait a minute. Divorce and cutting ties are too much. If this continues, father-in-law will have a very hard time in his old age. As long as we're together, we can manage without savings, right? If that were possible, no one would pay into pensions or worry about retirement. But look, father has his retirement money, so if we budget, we can manage. Divorcing you will be the biggest budget saver. Don't say that. I've been supporting you all this time. Buying ready-made meals and living it up is what you call support. Lisa, I'm sorry for everything. Please tell everyone not to cut ties with me. I also support cutting ties, so I have nothing to say to them. It's pointless to try to rely on Lisa anymore. Why? At my age, a divorce would be devastating. Mother, you don't have time for this. Start preparing for the divorce. Lisa, don't be so cold. I'm just returning the words you said to me. I promise I won't say it again. Please, keep the family together. You said I wasn't family, so you don't need my opinion, right? Lisa, you are family. Please, I beg you. No. From now on, you must make an effort to become independent. What was supposed to be a joyous 60th birthday celebration turned into the day my father-in-law decided to divorce my mother-in-law. They had been looking forward to spending a peaceful retirement together, but my mother-in-law's boredom led her to debt-ridden mamakatsu activities. To repay this debt, she had to leave her role as a housewife as soon as she turned 60. Starting work at her age, having been a housewife all her life, was incredibly tough. She made frequent mistakes and faced daily scolding from her younger supervisors. With the need to repay her debt and cover her living expenses, she couldn't afford to quit. 
Thus, my mother-in-law lost her family, money, and the peaceful retirement she had hoped for, ending up in a miserable life working solely to repay her debts. As for us. So I'll be able to come back in three months. Really? That's great news, Dad. Then when you return, let's all celebrate together. Being able to come home means you'll be able to relax a lot more, right? Yes, exactly. But until I get back... Don't worry, I'll handle the ventilation and cleaning from time to time. Noah, you've really got a wonderful wife. Take good care of her, okay? No need to remind him, Dad. Noah's head over heels for Lisa. Hey, don't say that to our parents. It's so embarrassing. Look at you blushing. My father-in-law's solo assignment is almost over. We were all delighted by the good news and decided to throw a welcome back party when he returned. Had my mother-in-law been responsible, she would likely be here, laughing with us now. However, seeing the relieved expression on my father-in-law's face, I felt that this was the right choice. I continued to maintain a good relationship with my father-in-law, Mia, and Oliver, and remained a happy couple with Noah. Though still inexperienced, I resolved to protect my home in my own way. With this determination in my heart, I looked at the smiling faces of my family, and I felt truly happy once again. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.